Hi friends, I'm Melanie and this is Make It Joyful. Thank you so much for joining me for this episode of Friday Sews. Today I have a new make to share with you and some new fabric. Okay, so the project that I completed this week is the Carolyn Pajama Pants by Closet Core. This is my first pattern with them. So here's here are the line drawings. The reason why I chose this pattern was because it had this piping, like a cuff with piping on the pants and it had pockets and elastic waist. So my measurements put me between a size 14 and 16. Right now I'm a 34 inch waist and a 43.5 inch hip. So that's right between both of them. And the instructions said, if you're between, go up a size on the pants. So I did and it worked great. Um, the fit is really good. I also tried to, uh, I added an inch and a half in the length. I thought the inseam was not going to be long enough or because my fabric is cotton, I thought it might shrink over time. You know how cotton does. And I just wanted to allow room for that. But actually, I think I lengthened it a little much. I made these out of a really nice, cotton flannel that I found at Joann's. Now, if you remember the last Friday sews, I was planning to make pajama pants out of this gorgeous cotton poplin that I bought recently. I absolutely love it. And I made a top that ends up matching this unintentionally. So I thought, well, that'd be a great pajama pants pattern um, combo but I didn't want to use this as my test fabric. And I, I was ironing this and it told me it wanted to be a dress. And it felt very sad about the idea of being pajama pants. And then I read somebody had written in the comments in the last video saying they thought it was too pretty to be pajama pants too. <laughs> so we must have been hearing the same thing. So anyway, I was I was feeling a bit sad about the idea of turning it into pajama pants, but I also didn't know what else to use. So I decided to go ahead and we went to Joann's to get some piping for the cuffs in like a lime green color. And I just used their pre-made piping and it was actually really good. I was concerned that it might be stiff, but it's actually fabulous. So I got this piping and as we were walking up to the register, they had tons of fabrics on clearance. And I happened to see a tropical print that is so pretty in so many beautiful colors that I love. And then it was also in flannel. And I had been thinking, it might be nice, it's still kind of chilly at night, it would have been nice to have some flannel pajama pants instead of cotton poplin ones. So anyway, it was $4 a yard, I needed three yards, and that is exactly what was left on the bolt. So I got these for $12. I love this fabric so much. I. I just, it's so soft and it actually feels like it had jo the Joanne printed on the selvage, but it feels like a better quality flannel than some of the other flannels that I bought at Joanne's in the past in like the nursery section. Some of those get bobbly pretty quickly, like pill. Um, but this actually feels really nice. I absolutely love them. I've worn them the past two nights. I feel so special in them and uh, they're a big hit. I didn't have the most fun sewing these pants. I mean, I know this is ridiculous because this is a very simple pattern, but um, sewing the pockets, I could not figure out what they were telling me to do. Luckily, I found a great Sew Along by Lauren Johnson on YouTube. And she went start to finish how to do these pants, showed how to do the pockets and the cuffs. And so from that point on, I basically ignored the written instructions and just followed her Sew Along. So I highly recommend that. I'll link it below. Uh, but it 
there was no way I would have figured it out reading the instructions. I did eventually figure them out thanks to that so long and I really like them. It's a different type of pocket than I've done before so that was pretty fun how it came to be. Now one thing that it did mess up for me is that uh, oh, I forgot to mention, I took out the faux fly. So there is a faux fly here, and I just cut that part off of the pattern piece and just had it follow a normal curve. I don't have the pattern piece with, with me to show you, but I don't think. Um, anyway, but it was super simple to do, and I found a tutorial online about how to do that too. So that's one difference that I made. Um, so initially when I do pants, I tend to, I'll mark the line on my fabric where I'm supposed to cut for the pattern piece. And then I give myself an extra two inches or so to play with so that when it's time to put the waistband on, I can try on the pants and make sure I get the rise that I want. That sounds a little funny. <laughs> you know what I mean. Anyway, but with these, the way that the pockets were, it didn't actually work because if I extended this fabric a little bit, which I actually wanted to do, I kind of wanted these to be up maybe half an inch more, but then I would have had, I'm not even showing you the pockets. Here we go. Where is it? Where are you pocket? Here. Um, then there would have been just this space where the pocket has ended and then there's this this extra fabric i think it would have looked weird so just fyi if you do that too allowing yourself a little extra room to adjust the rise for the first pair that you make um, you might want to not do the pockets the first time so you can still have that flexibility okay but let me tell you what i really really hated about these pants <laughs> okay i hate so you do the waistband, you fold it over, and then you're supposed to top stitch to catch the back of the waistband. And I know this is a technique that's used, and I absolutely hate it. It was so frustrating. I did it very carefully. I pinned it where it went above where I needed it to go. I sewed it and half the thing, it wasn't even caught and, and it looked so horrible. So what I ended up doing, cause the same technique is used on the cuffs to get a nice clean finish. And it does, it has a beautiful finish inside. But what I ended up having to do is, so you sew, first you sew the front of the waistband and the pants together, right? Then below that stitch line, I marked an eighth of an inch line basically i folded my my waistband over to meet that line and i had to hand baste it just really big stitches but all the way around because when i just pinned it to that line i still missed things because the fabric shifted so i hand basted it and then i could top stitch from the other side and i caught it all and it looked really nice and neat um, but it took me a little bit to figure out that I really couldn't do shortcuts for that. And all of those little steps of unpicking and thinking I did it and looking and seeing that actually half of it hadn't caught in the stitch line, that was so frustrating. But the worst part, so I was already frustrated with these pants. I just wanted them done. I was on the cuffs. The worst part is that while I was doing the cuts, uh, the cuffs, and doing that over stitching thing, whatever, top stitching thing, I broke my needle, which I, I think I've broken one needle in two years. I very rarely break a needle. And I broke this needle in my finger. So there it is. I don't know if you can see how this is a little purple. Um, luckily, it was not a very, it was just a basic needle. It wasn't like a jeans needle or something that would have just kept on sewing. Luckily, it broke right away. And because I heard a big clang, I stopped and I looked and saw that the needle was sticking out of my flesh. 
So the reason this happened is because I had my so, uh, my zipper foot on to do to get close to the piping. Um, to sew this piping that's that does look so beautiful. Look, I still have some basting stitches in there. I need to get rid of that. <laughs> look at this side. Anyway, um, so I used my zipper foot, which worked really well. And I realized that to get really close to the piping, I needed to set my needle to the left position. So I already don't have, right, normally you have kind of that barrier of the metal between the needle and your finger. If you're, I mean, normally my fingers aren't right there, but you know, sometimes they are. Anyway, I didn't have that barrier and the needle was far to the left and I just uh, wasn't careful enough and yeah, won't make that mistake again. Uh, so it went through my nail and everything. It was quite, quite painful, but not as painful as I would have expected it to be, which was good. Uh, but I had to go out of the room and like, I just froze. I go, I think I was like, ah, and everybody heard this clasp and my husband was across the hall and he goes, what? And my husband faints at the sign of blood. So I couldn't tell him what had happened or he would be useless to me. So I said, um, I need needle nose pliers, please. And I was like holding this and trying to have a normal face. And my mom's here right now who is also a nurse. And so she came and we both went to the kitchen sink and I pulled it out. And anyway, it was just, <laughs> I won't do that again. And just consider yourself warned, be extra careful when you're using a zipper foot. So, but once my pajamas are done and my flesh is still intact, I do love them. And strangely enough, I, I kind of do want to make another pair. Um, I really do enjoy this pattern. I love the fit. I think they're really special, special pants. <laughs> All right, moving on. I have, uh, we had a wonderful Valentine's Day. Just as a side note, my husband made, made me a card. He's really web savvy and stuff. So anyway, he made this little card with a um, QR code that led to a special letter for me with like pictures of the year. So on Valentine's Day, my daughter turned one. So it was a big celebration for us. We've got the whole yard decorated. We've got blow ups and flags hanging and hearts and everything. It's, it's big. So anyway, my husband wrote this thing and it says, you have my heart, Bobbin, and I'm seriously crazy for you. He did sewing puns. I just love it. And then there's like all these, I'm gonna cover the QR code, but little sewing things. Um, it was super cute. Anyway, okay, so what's next? I received my fabric from Mood Fabrics that I was looking for. I got these to make a pair of Mountain View jeans by Itch to Stitch. They're a pull-on pair of jeans and it calls for a fabric with 20 to 30% stretch. Now, 20, this has just barely 20. It says 20 on the Mood website, so I was like, okay, but mm, it's it's barely 20 if it is. So anyway, let me see, is it upside down? Oh no. I <laughs> love this position. I love this fabric so much. I, uh, this is a, is it a cotton twill, I think? It doesn't have any sheen at all. It's got kind of a dark gray background and then bits of it look a little dark plum on the background. But then it has bears, there's a snail, butterflies. I mean, for a dark fabric, it actually has a lot of beautiful colors. Now, of course, I'm thinking, oh, I don't know if I wanna wear these as pants. So let me talk to you about why. So if you can imagine this wrapped around as pants, I mean, they pretty, some pretty awesome pants. 
and I think I'd make them like ankle length. Gosh, this fabric is so pretty. But there are two things that I'm thinking now. So one is that I am still losing baby weight, uh, like pregnancy weight. And if I make these seriously awesome pants, will I be able to fit in them, you know, in another month or so? Or are they going to be too big? Now, they do have a lot of ways that I could adjust them. So that, that could still be a possibility. The other thing is this fabric is just so nice that it might be good to make something that would be, I don't know, a little more, like another thing I could use is a jacket. And I've been looking at different kind of anorak style jackets, which I've never had before, but wouldn't that be kind of cool? The only thing is I don't tend to wear dark colors especially near my face. But there are so many brighter pops of color. This could make a pretty cool jacket. And maybe with a bright lining that was kind of cozy. I don't know. So that is going to wait. And, and I think what I'll do, oh, the other, the other issue I've had is this was kind of expensive fabric. And I wanted to get some inexpensive stretch denim to test out the pattern first, but I have not been able to find any that I am excited about at all. I have looked in probably, I don't know, at least 20 different online stores. So I've been wondering, should I just do a lot of measurements, give myself some extra leeway with seam allowances and and things like that and just make them up in this fabric but every time I watch a video where someone says I'm not gonna muslin it I'm just going to go ahead and do it I always think now that is a bad idea and you should definitely not do that but I'm kind of thinking the same thing <laughs> so I'm not sure what always helps me though is to clean up my space so I've got some notes to write on the Carolyn pajamas. I need to get all that in an envelope. So that's all put away. And I think by the time I've tidied up everything, I will have more clarity about what I want to do next. So that is what's been going on in my sewing world. Thank you so much for joining me this week. And I hope you are having a wonderful week too. Um, please like and subscribe if you've liked this video. I would love to have you on my sewing journey. Take care and I'll see you again soon. Bye.